The Soul Biology and Soul Health Partnership, funded by AHDB and BBRO, has validated an integrated approach for soil health monitoring on farm, bringing together physical, chemical and biological soil assessments. This is a demonstration of how to sample in the field for routine monitoring of soil health on a rotational basis. So we're preparing to go out in the field to make our soil health assessment. That's to check up on the state of the soil. It's really a focus on the general health of the soil. We want to look at the character of the soil. That gives us the context, the soil texture, the soil depth, those layers, what the subsoil's like and drainage. But we need a set of tools to be able to really keep an eye on whether the soil's behaving like we want it to do. It's delivering the functions we need for good crop growth. So we've got our spade, we've got our bucket, but we've got to decide where to go to take that sample. And the important thing is to, is to reference this, is to know where it is. If we're looking for change through time, what we need to be able to do, because soil's variable, is go back to the same place to have a look in three or five years time. And that means we need to keep a good record of where that is. We need to choose that spot well, so it's representative. It gives us a good idea of the field. We're not trying to fit the whole of the field into the bucket, into the sample. What we're trying to do is choose a spot that allows us to get a sense of the health of the field. And we can mark that with a Google pin or a what three words, or simply as a cross on the map, a treasure map for where we might come back to and sample in the future. So we've identified our spot in the field, ready to do our soil health assessment. I tend to put my bucket down in the middle of that spot and then stay within five metres of it to make sure I'm staying within a representative area. If that moves a little bit the next time I come back, that's not a problem, I'm within the same area. And within that area, I'm going to take three visual assessments of soil structure and inside those blocks also count the earthworms and we'll also collect a representative sample of soil to send away for analysis. We're making it um, observations of the physical structure, the biological activity and then sending the soil away for both some more microbiological and some chemical assessments. So visual assessment of soil structure, basically it's the spade test. Get your spade out, we need to go in three times down the block of soil, down each side of the block and we're trying to go to full depth of the spade and you can get a sense of what the soil's like as you put your spade in, you can get a sense of whether there are any restrictive layers in that top layer. You see I've just gone down those three sides of that block and I'll loosen it up a little bit and what we're going to get is one side that I haven't touched with a spade and it's that one that I want to look at. You see as it comes out that's the undisturbed side that we're going to review. Let's do it on the board break it open so we can see that structure dry soil at the top moisture further down we're breaking it open and looking at the structure as we go and we can see there we're watching out because there will be probably earthworms in the block and we're keeping an eye open for them as we dig and just separating them out so we can count and inspect them in a little while the soil usually at this time of year has moderate earthworm activity as the soil wets up um, in the autumn. And we need to make sure that we're looking for those earthworms. And there's one in the whole of that square block of soil. So we would put those earthworms, two of them there, two earthworms there, both adults. We put them to one side um, to count and keep an eye on. They're fairly inactive because it's a bit dry. But we keep looking and breaking that block open, really making sure that we've checked and seen how many earthworms are in this block of soil. And we're looking in a good active soil for around four to eight earthworms in the block of soil. And in a really biologically active soil, often one that's a bit more clay than this one for more earthworms. So somewhere more like eight to 16. And at this point in the rotation, immediately following a cereal in this stubble, there's also not a lot of food for those earthworms. If we were to dig in a cover crop at the same time of year, we'd find more roots and probably also more earthworms. So we've looked at that structure. We're going to compare that to the key. I'm using the healthy grasslands 
soil's key to give ourselves a score. And what we've got here is the, the block was intact, but those aggregates, those blocks in the soil easily broke apart. There are clear aggregates in this sandy soil and that suggests a really good structure. So two is a really good score. If we were seeing evidence of compaction in this topsoil, then we'd be giving it a score of three or four or even five if it was very compact. We can of course also get our eye in, in our fields and sample deliberately in the tram lines or under the hedge to give ourselves a reference point. Of course, the hedge will give us a much darker usually and much more crumbly soil structure, a better soil structure there because of less disturbance. And then the tram lines would be able to see for ourselves those visual evidence of compaction, those platy aggregates in the soil. So when you've got your VES block, it's really useful to take a photograph of that um, set up so that it shows a really good example of that structure as a record that you can use in the future to compare to. If we make sure we get a good representative sample from within our five meter area, now to send away for soil analysis, getting a few samples into the bag and giving them a good mix and we'll take a subsample from here to send away for analysis. From here, we'll have the chemical parameters, pH, phosphorus, potassium, magnesium measured. We'll also ask for organic matter to be measured here to see how the soil is measuring up in terms of its organic matter levels against the benchmarks. And we're then able to benchmark that together with our visual assessments and our earthworm counts to give us that soil health scorecard. So to create our soil health scorecard, what we need to do is go to the benchmarking documents or the Excel spreadsheet held on HDB Great Soils, and then we can create our colouring in. We can identify whether our indicators are red, amber or green. So where they're red, that really is flagging up the need to investigate further, like the earthworm numbers here at Farm 3. Um, when they're amber, that's flagging up a need to perhaps look in a bit more detail to review the situation and think about it a bit more. Or where they're green and all of field A here at farm one shows really good values for those indicators, suggesting this soil is in pretty good health. The nice thing about the scorecard is it enables us quickly to identify those key issues. Benchmark traffic lights help us to understand where the areas we might need to take action are and where we might need to investigate further to make sure our soils are in really good health going forward. For more information on the Soil Biology and Soil Health Partnership and our other resources on soil management, visit ahdb.org.uk forward slash greatsoils.